Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Right, welcome to the preview show of Leicester City versus Manchester City on the 11th of September 2021, a 3pm kickoff at the King Power Stadium. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, Leicester in this little vlog and their aims and what they aim to do against us and what they aim to do for the season. Uh, there'll be 3,245 lucky City fans there as well to cheer our wonderful blues on. Of course, we'll be trying to predict our start in 11, which is quite difficult at the moment because we're still, as I'm recording this, I'm still not, I'm not sure about the Brazilians, etc. So, uh, and I think everyone came out of the European games okay. Obviously, I was a bit worried about Stonesy, but uh, we'll have more than that later. And obviously, I'll try and predict Leicester's start in 11 as well. I've been doing better at the our opponents this season than, than obviously our own team. Of course, the match isn't being shown live here in the UK, which is absolutely ridiculous as loyal fans. You know, if we supported City abroad, we'd be able to watch it legally. In this country, unfortunately, we can't, uh, you know, supporting our own team, we're not allowed to watch uh, things like this. So it is a bit, needs sorting out one way or the other. I mean, I appreciate the 3 pm kickoffs and stuff like that. I'm a traditionalist myself, but uh, it just seems a bit of a, a bad job, really, when you can't watch your own team. Certainly. Fans like you know, fans like you and me who might be listening to go to go to as many games as we can, etc., etc. But uh, yeah, if I lived abroad, I could watch every single one. Which uh, so there's something wrong there, something in there somewhere. Right, who's in charge of this game? Well, yeah, we've got Paul Turney back. He did the Community Shield against Leicester, don't forget as well. Uh, and his little Lionels are Konstantin Hadzidakis and Neil Davis. And uh, yeah, VAR at Stockley Park. We've got um, and Andre Mariner. As the main guy and his little assistant, Richard West. So there you go. About previous meetings, obviously at their, at their place. Of course, last time out, uh, we you know we talk about games at their uh, matches at their ground. Uh, was the third of April, twenty twenty one. Of course, where a, a comfortable in the end, a two nil win. Goals from Mendy, I'll be allowed to say his name even, uh, and a Jesus, and a sort of very efficient, no messing performance from City that day. Uh, but I don't think we uh, worried too much about that that victory. Overall, yeah, overall at uh, Leicester, uh, Filbert Street, uh, this the Walkers now the King Power. Of course, uh, we played fifty one times over history at their place. We won seventeen. Drawn 14 and lost 20. So it'd be nice to get up towards another eight, win 18, won't it? Get, try and even up that win and losses at ratio. would be nice. Our biggest win was a 4 1 win back. I, I don't remember this. I mean, I know I know you'll find that very hard to believe. January the 15th, 1938. Yeah, with 17,332 at uh, Filbert Street. Uh, a 4 1 win. Yeah, uh, Peter Doherty got a hat trick and Jimmy Heal got the other. And our biggest defeat, uh, obviously, pretty well known this. I may have even done a history thing on this, if I, if I remember rightly. It was uh, an 8 4 thriller. Back on the 22nd of February 1958, yeah, eight, we lost 8-4. Troutman in there, who had, he's the guy who had the bad back that day. Our four goals were scored, a couple by Bobby Johnston, Billy McAdams and a Ken Barnes penalty. And it wasn't, it was quite close up to, up to a certain stage, I think. So even though it was 8 4, it was actually quite close. But there you go. Yeah, odds to win the match. Please check out my odds show as well. I don't condone gambling in any way. But uh, just, just as a matter of interest, the odds to win the match. City are 8 to 15 on tomorrow uh, as I'm recording this. Uh, Leicester are 16 to 5. Sorry, the draw is 16 to 5. And Leicester are 5 to 1. So that's not a bad price, especially if we don't end up with a goalkeeper and. Uh, one of our wingers, isn't it? This Brazil thing doesn't come off, it gets sorted out. But please check out my little odd show as well. I try and 
Uh, look at look for the value and obviously give you an idea as to what my thinking behind certain things are. So it's not not just a straightforward running through all odds. It's it's if you have a watch of it. It's only ten minutes or so. It's it's just a good little watch on on information as well about the game. Uh, City, yes. Yeah, so, so here we go. City. Hopefully we'll have Edison and the Jesus problem sorted out. Uh, both players uh, at this point in time. Obviously, more so Jesus now, but obviously, significantly, Edison makes a big difference, doesn't he? I mean, he's actually irreplaceable properly in our City team at the moment. And certainly, uh, at a pinch, Stefan is OK, but if we're talking, you know, no offence to Mr Scott Carson, but uh, he's, not, he's nothing like even perhaps Stefan or, or Edison. He's got his attributes, of course he has, but unfortunately, most of his attributes are off the pitch, aren't they, yeah? Uh, morale, morale officer, I think he's called, isn't he? That's I think that's another level for him. But uh, if, if Carson, if Carson plays tomorrow, I think we could look, we could lose this. So I'm hoping it'll be sorted. Edison will, will be in goal. Of course, KDB and uh, Foden have been trained. I doubt very much they'll be playing tomorrow. I'm more inclined to see him that they'll start on the bench if they do start if they do figure at all. I can't see any rush to get them back. They're such key players with a lot of big games coming up. I don't think. Uh, we're going to do anything silly to try and get them back and get them, you know, uh, injured before they even have a chance to come back, to come back and play again. Uh, a win, yeah. I mean, if we do get a win here, we do. We can field our strongest team. A win will send a message out. I mean, we've got to say we've got a really some tough games coming up, haven't we? We need this win. We can't afford not to win this. To be honest with you, you think of the league games we've got coming up. Never mind the cup and uh, Champions League games as well. And we're obviously approaching the two games a week uh, period now, aren't we? So, yeah, we, we really need to win this one tomorrow. So we really need our strongest team out. But uh, I'll give you my little thoughts on that in a moment as things stand as they are now. As far as Leicester, yeah, well, I think my pre-season predictions predicted top six. Uh, I don't think we'll get top four. And obviously, Brendan Rodgers is still, and as he always, always has been doing, doing a grand job there. He's doing a great job. But he doesn't like changing his 11 either, does he? So when I look at his team, it, it, sometimes that's why the opponents are easier. These other managers don't, don't swap and change as much as Pep does. Uh, but uh, I think there are two players after their win at Norwich who maybe on borrowed time. I think I think he might replace one of them. Uh, even even then, I'm I'm not 100%, but the other one might just get a, a let off and be able to play, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, Soyuncu is one of the guys, appears to be struggling a little bit. He made some mistakes against Norwich. I think for the game against City, Rodgers still has the ideal replacement there, and this guy will, I think this, enjoy, this guy will enjoy playing against City as well. The only other player looking iffy, in my opinion, of who's been playing for Leicester is Harvey Barnes, as I say. But I'm not as obvious that his place will get taken. But I think he needs to sort of up his game a little bit. His, his place in the team might be under threat as well. Uh, Old Brian took over from Perez in the Norwich game, and I think he should probably hold on to that position based on how he played against Norwich. Uh, he may be, they may be tempted to start Ian Acho. Brendan Rodgers might be start, uh, tempted, but I think uh, if you look at the stuff and look at the, I think he scored in the international break, Ian Acho, didn't he? But uh, arrested Vardy, which is what he has been, he doesn't do any internationals anymore, is still surely first choice. I don't think he'll play them both, although he has done in the past. I don't think he'll play them both against City. So here you go. This is my team. This is my Leicester team. Let me know what you think, anyway, of this Leicester team. Uh, Schmeichel. Pereira, Amati, and I've stuck Evans in there for his Soyuncu or whatever he's, um, Lord Farquhar, the lookalike. Uh, yeah, so I've put Evans in there, although it wouldn't surprise me if, if Soyuncu does play, but uh, I think Evans relishes playing against City and I think uh, he may be stuck in, but I don't know. But I'm, I'll go for Evans anyway. Thomas, T. Elements, uh, and Didi, all bright, and to start again, Madison. Uh, and I think he'll give Barnes another chance. I think I think he may just make this team with uh, Vardy making up the eleven, of course, for Leicester City. For Manchester City, for us, for us, yeah. I think, as I said, I think KDB and Foden will be on the bench if they're in the squad at all. But here we go, and with the provisos, obviously, we've got at the moment. I've put Edison in there, obviously. We'll have no alternative. Uh, I don't think we're going to put Mr Walker in there. We have Edison can't play, so obviously we've got Carson as an alternative. I think Walker, as long as everyone's fit, it'll be fine. Uh, he, he, 
played okay last night uh, when I watched the England game. Uh, Laporte, yeah, but I mean, I'm not worried if Stones goes in there, but Laporte had a bit of an injury scare, didn't he? But he did play again, so hopefully he'll be all right. So I'll put Laporte, but I'm not worried about if Stones, again, Stones, <laughs> Stones could have been injured, couldn't he? So, but either or is okay for me, but I'll stick Laporte in there. Diaz, of course. Cancelo, I nearly put Zinchenko in, but I think with these European and League Cup games coming up, I think Zinchenko will be, be part of the team for those. So I'll leave Cancelo in there. And I've stuck Rodri again on the same basis with Werner. I think Werner will be safe for certainly Leipzig game uh, and for other games. I think he'll go with Rodri. I think he's, he's going to do that more this season. He's got to rely on Rodri. He's, he's got to get the team working with Rodri in the team rather than Fernandino. as it's, it's his last season, of course. So only logical thing to do, in my opinion. Uh, Gundogan, Bernardo, again, looking good for Portugal. He's not looked too bad for us, so there's no reason at all why Bernardo shouldn't stay in the team. Uh, Torres, of course, I think he scored again, didn't he? There's no reason he shouldn't be in the team. Grealish, I think he had a cracking game against Poland, I thought, the other night. Uh, I think Grealish will be in there. And I've stuck Jesus in, obviously. If Jesus isn't available, if he can't play, obviously Sterling's an admirable backup. He played OK for England. I don't think he was fantastic, but uh, I think he'll, he'll get the nod there. So let me know what you think anyway, with your uh, City team as well. Here we go. The match quirky stats. Uh, my, my thanks to Goal.com for some of these stats this week. So these are just little, little odd. Funny things, you know, before the game. Uh, none of the last 11 league meetings between Leicester and Manchester City has finished as a draw. Yeah, I was saying that in my odds programme. It's a very rarely draw, so I sort of steered clear of that. But, hey, these statistics are meant to be broken sometimes, aren't they? The Foxes winning four to the Cities and seven. Yeah, so we're, we're OK on that. Leicester have won three of their last five Premier League home games against reigning champions. Yeah, so they've lost two. Uh, and actually won the other three. They beat Liverpool 3-1 last season, for instance, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Of all the Premier League fixtures have been played at least 20 times, Leicester versus City is the only one to have been won by the away side over 50% of the time, so that bodes well. 11 away wins in 20 games. There you go, so there's a, a bit of a quirky one. Uh, Leicester are looking to win both of their first two home games in a top-flight campaign for the first time since 1966-67. Very surprised, very surprised. Not to, I could do with checking that one, but that's a good one. City have not lost both of their first two away games in a single Premier League campaign since 2006-2007. All right, not as not as uh, not as good as the Leicester one, but that's not bad either, is it? Leicester striker Vardy has scored eight goals in ten Premier League games against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. Of course, he has more top-flight goals than any other player has netted against sides managed managed by by the Spaniard. This includes two hat-tricks against us, one in December 2016 and one in September 2020. Let's keep him quiet. We'll be all right, won't we? Match Day Live. Yeah, if you'd like to tune into Match Day Live on the City site, it obviously starts one hour ahead of kickoff. Uh, carries on at our times a little bit after the game as well. And you've got in the studio with the wonderful... Lovely Natalie Pike. We've got uh, David James and Ned Anua this week. Who will be the guests on Match Day Live uh, for this uh, Leicester City versus Manchester City with uh, the usual mix of light entertainment, etc., etc. My match report. My match report. I'm thinking with it being a three o'clock kick. I'm hoping to get it out Saturday night. So keep your eyes out for that for the for the match report. Full match report. Uh, if not, it will be Sunday morning, but uh, I'm hoping to get it out Saturday night. If all things go to plan, you never you never know. Life life sometimes gets in the way, doesn't it? So please push that notification button. Hey, get those likes up as well, guys. Give us, give us a thumbs up if you've not already done so. That'd be fantastic. But check those notifications. And as I said, don't forget my ad show, which is uh, is out there. Just as I said, it's not just bland figures and, and stats. It's it's some, some sort of backup to sort of things as well. So just have a look at that if you get a chance, because it gives us a bit more, gives you a bit more detail on City and Leicester as well on different things. So if you can have a watch of that, that'd be absolutely brilliant. And of course, the History Boys uh, feature against Leicester City. And I take you back, I take you back to Filbert Street, which I've been to three or four times. Uh, the fourth game in the 1968-69 season as the champions, Manchester City, uh, visited Filbert Street for the fourth game of that season. So please check out that history vlog as well on, on Leicester City versus Manchester City. And please, all your comments are very well. And let me let me know what you're thinking, especially your lineups for tomorrow, please. That'll be absolutely wonderful.
Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me go and do the rest of the day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps have a look. Have a look at my film and TV channel if you get a look. Not the, uh, if you just have a break from football, we all need it sometimes, don't we? I try and inform and entertain on there. But either way, whether you see me on there or you see me back on here on Saturday or whenever it is, or you go and have a look at some of my stuff now on the playlist, that'd be fantastic. Until we do meet again, all I ever ask is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.